Hey guys, Tiffany here with an updated version to how we made our crystal tail for our Keita Ari cosplay from the game League of Legends. And to start off making this tail, I have a two scaled blueprint available on my website at www.tiffanygordoncosplay.com or just see the link below. Once you've printed off all of the sheets for this blueprint, you will need to trim off the edges where the box is indicated and then tape each of the pieces together. Because this blueprint is extremely large, I did find that it was easier to tape the pieces into horizontal sections first, and then once all of those were taped, taping the rest of them together to make the one blueprint. For this blueprint, you will need one jumbo sheet of transparent warbler, and this should cover all of the pieces for this single tail. You can also do this using EVA foam, but this tutorial is going to be specifically going over how to make it out of the transparent warbler. Now first you'll lay it out onto your blueprint and then you will use a black sharpie and a ruler to trace each of the tail segments onto your transparent warbler. The sheet you will need to move around to the blueprint and kind of puzzle piece them together to maximize the use of your warbler. Then you can use a pair of scissors to cut out each of the tail segments. I then scored each of the piece using an X-Acto knife and a ruler to pierce halfway through the transparent warbler. And here's a little guide of which side of the warbler I did the scoring on, whether it was the bottom side or the top side. And this will help with making your piece more three-dimensional. Next. I bent each of the pieces where we had scored, and then using a paper towel, wiped off all of the Sharpie lines on the warbler. To make each of the segments of the tail lay out flat, I then used a heat gun to apply heat to the warbler. This is going to activate the warbler's heat temperature and make it where, while it is hot, be able to move and bend and go flat, and then when it cools off, it'll be hard and flat. And here's all the pieces after they have been heat treated. For painting, I took each of the pieces into my garage and I ended up taping them down to a cardboard box so they wouldn't move. The first color that I'm gonna to use to paint the tail is with the Tester's Airbrush Paint color Turquoise which I then applied to all of the tail pieces doing a light coat so that way you could still see through all of the warbler. The next color I used was a combination of Tester's pearl white and also a purple color. And then I applied it to the edges of all of the tail pieces. This way it kind of looks more like a crystal. And for our last paint color that I used, I did a mix of the pearl white and yellow color. Again, applying only a little bit here and there on all of the edges and bends. And here's all of the pieces once they are done being painted. For assembling all of the tail pieces, I ended up using a hot knife and also these third arms, which are a little base that you can put in locking tweezers to hold all of your warbler pieces. You'll also need a respirator while doing this process. The warbler when heated up at this level is very, very smelly, so don't forget to open up your windows as you work. I then slowly started to attach the pieces together by first using the hot knife and doing a simple tack onto the corners where they aligned, holding the pieces in place while they cool off and then will bond together. By using the hot knife, you're going to be melting both pieces of the warbler so they're fusing together. And you do wanna be cautious on your heat. If it gets too hot, you may end up burning your warbler, but too cold, you may not be able to bond them. So you will have to definitely play around with this and kinda get the hang of it before trying to attach all your pieces together. Once two parts, of the piece of warblers are tacked together, you can then slowly go up that section with the hot knife, slowly fusing the two pieces together to seal up that crack. Now when your hot knife gets dirty, you will want to clean it. All you have to do is take a metal wire brush and just rub off all of the black soot at the end of it 
or you can also use an X-Acto knife slowly cutting away from you down the silver tip of the hot knife to remove all of the black soot. Sometimes the warble pieces will not exactly align when you're trying to pull the hot knife down and make it nice, flat, and even. With this, I ended up using a ceramic working tool, which basically is a wooden tool that has a silver tip with a slight curve at the end. And this will make it where you can insert the tip of the tool in between the two sheets of warbler and bend and pull it till the two warbler pieces align and then you can use the hot knife to seal them back up. And then slowly do this entire process until you have one side of the tail done. And then repeat this for the other side. After your two sections are done, I then proceeded to attach the two middle sections of the tail onto one half. For the sparkly light up effect that is inside of the tail, I ended up using three strands of fairy lights, which I then attached to the inside of the tail using hot glue. Once all of the fairy lights were attached to the inside of the two tails, I then started to attach both of the pieces together using the hot knife again. Ta-da! Our crystal tail part is done! Now, to attach the tail to your body, I first used tracing paper to trace out what the end shape of the tail was. And then I traced this shape onto 10 millimeter EVA foam, which I then cut out and cut that piece into two. So that way our batteries for our fairy lights could go through the center. To attach the EVA foam to the inside of the tail, I then used contact cement glue, applying it to the edges of the EVA foam, as well as to the inside of the tail onto the warbler, letting both pieces fully dry before attaching them together. This will hold the shape of your tail as well as give it a little bit more structure. I then cut a strip of 10 millimeter EVA foam, which I traced around each of the sections, cutting with a box cutter and slowly gluing it to the outside part of the tail. This will give you a little bit more room to attach our next components. This will give your tail more structure as well as give you more surface area for us applying our next piece. And then I traced this new shape using tracing paper as well as made two indications on where I needed to make slits. I then traced and cut this piece out of four millimeter EVA foam and used a hot knife to burn out those two little slit sections. For the tail to attach to yourself, I like to use belts. And so I ended up making out of the same type of material that I used for the K to Ari costume, a belt from the black fabric, which I then threaded through our four millimeter EVA foam. For attaching this piece to the tail, I once again applied contact cement glue to the back side of our new shape, as well as to the top half of our tail. And when they were both dry, I attached them together. I then cut two pieces of Velcro and attached them to the belt straps with the adhesive, followed by sewing them so that way it had extra support. All that's left now is to attach the tail to yourself and it's done! Yay! Thanks guys for watching this updated version of how to make your own Keda Ari tail and I hope you found this helpful. If so, press the subscribe button and let me know what you think of the video in the comments. Much love guys! Mwah!